Going back a little bit further um, than your early recruitment days, what were you like as a child? Well, I don't think I would like to have had me as a child because I think I was probably quite difficult. Um, I was quite curious. I was quite non-conforming. Um, I did get chucked out of school, uh, a grammar school when I was 16. And I think I, I don't know why, whether I was born with this, but I always had a sort of healthy disrespect for authority. Um, so I was always questioning why we had to do things a certain way. Um, there was still fagging at my school. You had to kind of clear up the dinner after people. It was kind of awful, really. And I think that's where I developed this kind of healthy disrespect for authority. I say it's a healthy disrespect for authority. Um, perhaps it's, uh, it's not, really. Um, but I was always entrepreneurial uh, from a young age. I wanted to achieve things, so I had a paper round. Uh, I always had some kind of hair-brained idea of, of money-making. Um, so I arranged pop concerts for uh, the local community center when I was at school to enable me to buy a moped. I was always sort of up to something, uh, really. Um, and uh, I think that made me kind of quite difficult to manage. Probably arrogant, <laughs> very confident. From 11, I sort of brought myself up. Um, and therefore, I was very independent. That's probably the best way to describe it. Very independent. That's a positive spin on it, isn't it? Uh, from a young age. And nothing really fazed me. I was I was happy to do anything and everything. So I set up my own business at 10. Uh, so that was the first startup, I suppose, thinking about it then. With business cards, with a rate charge. <laughs> everything would go around knock on people's doors it was a car cleaning business so uh, we had different rates for cleaning people's cars so yeah I was I was happy to go anywhere ever it did get me in trouble a few times what about you that that's amazing I love that I didn't know that about you that is so cool um so I was I was not um an independent child I didn't get my first job until I was 17 I was I wasn't lazy I just never thought about doing it um I obviously didn't I, my parents obviously were happy giving me pocket money all those years um I was different I was definitely different I've always been happy not to be the same as everybody else um and the other thing I was um which is a very female term I was bossy but I'm happy to use the word bossy as a woman because I don't think it's always a derogatory comment um I think it means that you can get some things done um and I think I'm probably still quite bossy now Naughty. Um, I like fun. I like doing things. I don't like sitting in classrooms and being told what to do. Uh, I, and I actually didn't know this when I was at school, but I found out um, later in life I'm severely dyslexic. So I, I struggled at school. I really struggled in the um, classroom. I struggled at concentration. Um, but I found that I had a really good knack if there was a big exam coming or something you know where we're gonna to have to really concentrate I'm very good at asking questions so I would ask the teacher lots and lots of questions and I could really get the time that we spent on the work down so much so that I used to have people saying when you go in today we've got that exam could you ask a few questions at the beginning of it so you know I, I sort of played up a little bit at school definitely so I think I was yeah definitely naughty a bit mischievous um I was a bit of a dreamer I wanted to be an actress or an air hostess or on TV or, you know, something. I wanted to do something big and grand, which I uh, never got around to doing it and didn't even know if I had the skills. But, you know, it was always, it was never I just want to get a job and stay at home. I, I had quite a, a sort of fantasy, fantasy, is that the word? Uh, you know, I'd fantasise about where we could go and what we could do and what would life would be like. Bit of a dreamer. Oh God, this is this is where my commitment to authenticity kind of struggles a little bit because honestly, I was horribly, horribly bullied. Like I never fit in. I was like the the kid on the outside who was trying desperately to be in the cool the bang gang, but never was. I never felt I fitted in. I never found I felt my tribe. Um, and I really, really, I kind of kept my head down and didn't want to be visible. I was kind of the one in with my nose in a book and kind of disappearing into dream worlds and having my adventures that way because, well, basically I didn't have any friends. <laughs> but that that's kind of what I meant when I was talking about my early recruitment career. Um, just trying to be someone that I wasn't, trying, trying to fit in. Um, and it kind of took going through some pretty, don't get me wrong, it was very successful in my early recruitment career, but... Mm. It kind of took, well, it took a divorce, quite frankly, for me to kind of say, hang on a minute, there's there's got to be a better way of doing this. And looking at what I was like as a child and thinking, okay, 
I'm reach, well, I was reaching 30 by that point. How do I want to live my next decade? I was not the, the really popular guy in the class. I was a bit brainy, but I was also a bit lazy and I was probably sporty, but not so sporty that I want, and that's more, more the individual sports rather than the collective that played rugby, but it's mainly the individual sports. And, and I think probably I was quite a solitary child too, because I've got a younger sister, but much younger. And so therefore it's one of those things we just, I wasn't necessarily the guy that was always the center of the gangs and the whatever. Um, and as a consequence, therefore never really felt, I mean, I don't keep in touch with maybe one or two, I don't keep in touch with school friends. It's actually, it was later that I became, you know, my social network spanned and grew. Okay. But I was always a very curious child. And again, going back to teacher, I think when it came to certain subjects and certain reading or coming out of books with on your question, I mm -hmm. certainly threw myself in things that, in, that interested me. And I then, I wasn't aware at the time about you know, growth mindsets and all the things that you know people talk about now. But I think curiosity is something which is an undoubted attribute just to actually about people about learning you know why is that work what's going on there what's mm -hmm. like, i'm interested by that bit of history or whatever it might be and actually going out and finding out more about it and whilst i was never really a hard worker i was bright enough to get by and i think that no doubt what i think helps me and has helped me through life is just a general curiosity and people and things and just wanting to know why mm, i think see i used to think i was a dream <laughs> I know now that I really wasn't. Um, <laughs> we moved around a lot when I was younger. So I went to lots of different schools. Um, and I was always the new person fitting in. And for a very large part of my early adult life, I kind of almost mirrored that kind of... Um, behavior i suppose um you know after a couple of years i'll get bored and want to move on mm. a couple of years get bored and get move on that's just because i was taught um so i spent a lot of my childhood trying to fit in um and trying too hard it makes me a little bit cringy now you know i was always the one that would be sharing the bag of sweets in in the playground and not because i was a cool kid but because i was almost trying to buy friends um so I know that now that I was quite attention seeking and quite needy. Well, if you ask me, mum, she'd say I was gobby. I don't know why she would think that, Angela, at all. Um, yes, I, I was very competitive. Um, I was um, always in trouble for answering back or having the last word. Um, even at school, like if anyone was talking, they didn't need to see me, it would usually be me um and yeah i was in trouble for that but nothing else i was really studious and i would always do my best at school um i got great grades and and i went on to do my nneb afterwards thought i wanted to be a nursery nurse realized very early on that that wasn't really for me um i'm laughing because my sister did exactly the same she, she did all the qualifications she did everything she needed to do she she got a job one day as an au pair started the job i sent her a card saying congratulations <laughs> end of the day she had it a notice in and that was it so yeah. I just, <laughs> sorry that was that. my dream job an au pair in france that's what i thought i was going to go and do um yeah so it's harder than so, it yeah. thinks, you think isn't it I was good as a child, you know, I, I found some old school reports and they're all positive all the way through, mm -hmm. apart from must wear the right school uniform. So as a teenager, I rebelled against the uniform and how charitable I was. And I, I set up um, mm -hmm. part of the, the thing that I set up at school was uh, collecting charity money, going around to the classrooms and asking people to donate on a Monday morning. Um, and that's, I suppose, where I first got my my thing about giving back. Um, to, to give in to people who don't have the same opportunities as we have. So, so. Yeah, no, I was very, very quiet, very shy. My mum even thought I had learning difficulties because I didn't really talk. It wasn't until I went to school that I really came out of my shell and everything like that. So I just sort of blossomed with age, you know, with time and, and experience, etc. Was there something at, quiet. at school that helped you to, to come out of your shell? Well, I think that I was just an observer. Even when I first went to school, I think that even my teacher said, oh, she's very, very quiet. But I think I was just observing life and people and, and just seeing, all oh, right, OK, this is what it's all about. Yeah, I'll get involved now. Oh, that's interesting, because I must admit, as recruiters, we are usually quite activists and just want to oh, be yeah. at the forefront of everything and getting involved. So that that taking a step back and, and thinking about it and observing before you dive in. Yeah, like, no, oh, I was definitely, definitely a quiet observer. 
Yeah, no, my, my daughter's the same. I, I can see that. Um, so I think there's there's definitely positives to that. <laughs> Whereas the rest of us all dive in yeah. just make mistakes as we go along. You're less likely to make any mistakes. You've sort of sussed it all out before it happens. Yeah. Okay. Shy. I was, okay. um, yeah, I was, I was a second child. So I always had an older sister to look out for me. Um, so I, although I probably never came across as lacking in confidence, that was always because I had a big sister that did everything first. But actually, take her away, I was I was quite shy. So, um, but I was very very hardworking, very studious, a bit of a swat. <laughs> I think I think we're quite bright generally as recruiters, aren't we? So whether mm. we're a swat or whether there's just natural ability there, um, but the shyness is is quite unusual. But we've had quite a few people say that, so it's like they came into their own later on. Um, and yeah, again, I think recruitment. recruitment wasn't a natural. It, it wasn't a natural career choice for me. Um, I never particularly wanted to be in sales. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. Never wanted to be in sales. And historically, you know, especially when I was younger, I, I didn't enjoy public speaking. But actually, <laughs> recruitment <laughs> has um, taught me that you know you, you it, it gives you it gives you the confidence to be able to talk to anybody. And you realise that everybody is just a person, exactly the same as you, um, the same hopes and fears. So you just get on with it. It's, uh, when you get to my age, it's hard to remember what you're like as a child. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was the fifth one down. So I had uh, three sisters above me and a brother above me. Um, the first four all had a year between them. And then I was four years later. Wow. Uh, so there was a, a little gap. Um, Catholic family in Yorkshire, so it's cold and with Catholics, so um, plus the seven kids. Um, and then I had two two sisters below me, two younger sisters, again, four years in between each, so it's quite quite a spread. Mm. So my older sister's eight years older than me, my younger sister's eight years younger than me, so literally the 16-year span. Mm. Um, I was a mixture as a, as a child. I, apparently, I've been told by my, my brother and sister that I didn't really speak much until I was about three or four so I just used to point at things and they used to give them to me um, and I was um, I was the first one in the family that didn't go to university the other the five above me all went uh, in fact the two below me went as well so I've always sort of been a bit of a black sheep in that way that I, I sort of I, I wanted to work I think because my dad died at 12 and my mother brought us up we were sort of taught to accept what we had and it was a very happy childhood a really happy childhood. Um, grew, growing up in a small country town in Yorkshire, caravanning, um, being able to run free, all those sort of things. And I liked people's company, and I also liked playing on my own as well. So quite often I'd hide away and just play with my toy cars and Lego or whatever. Um, and I became quite good at sport, so I became a team player in that way. Um, yeah, and I had a just, yeah, real happy childhood. I'm very active, would not be able to sit still, you know, also in the classroom and would interrupt. Once I would know the answer, I had to tell. And uh, so, but I, I was lucky enough that my teachers at that time told my mother at one, uh, you know, a teacher, um, parent teacher meeting, okay, um, she's disturbing once in a while in the classroom, but let her they let her her be and stay spontaneous as she is because that makes Britta Britta. So, and I think that was at that time especially uh, was was something I think which uh, uh, was really good. And also with you know entrepreneurship, if you are not spontaneous, if you're not curious, if th this is my driver, you know. I so one thing I can remember, which is quite funny. Um, is I, and I think it makes me a bit innovative or agile. I must have had been some sort of innovation person. Do you remember, you probably don't, you're a lot younger than me, I think. Um, you remember those big navy knickers that you used to wear in school? <laughs> yeah. But at that, nowadays they call them modesty pants, don't they? So if you're doing cartwheels, you don't yeah. see those knickers. There's a debate <laughs> on that the other day. But anyway, these navy knickers, I one day um, I was going swimming and I, well, somebody invited me to a swim party and I went to put my swimming costume on and it didn't fit me because, you know, 
And I thought, oh, I haven't got a swimming costume. So what I did is I got two ribbons and I got these navy knickers and I sewed the, the ribbons round and then I tied it round my neck like a halter neck. Anyway, um, I thought this was amazing. What a great idea. And I thought it looked quite good as well. It made it high cut in there because it was going quite up there. Anyway, some of the girls at the swimming said, oh, I really like your swimming costume. <laughs> Um, so I decided to make these knickers for my friends and I sold them to them. <laughs> we'll make these swimming costumes. Um, so, yeah. Oh, my yeah. word. I love that. Well, you know, that's quite innovative. Yeah. That's amazing. How big were they? They were quite big. Yeah. Those, those knickers <laughs> were big in those days. And another example of it was um, I... I, I obviously want I, I, I obviously wanted to make a few bob because I remember one time at school um, they they were doing like um, trying to raise as much money for charity or something like that and I decided that I wanted to run a stall at lunch times um, and I just um, first of all I didn't have any so what I wanted to do was go there was this really lovely cook shop in our town. A cook shop. I don't, I don't even like cooking now, so I don't know why I was it. I found it quite interesting, this cook shop. It had all in it. So I, um, so I wanted to buy some things from this cook shop and then sell it in the playground mm. for some money. I think it was about 13 or so. But I didn't have any money to buy the stuff from the cook shop. So I set up a stall with my friend, shaking a jar. This is for charity. This is for charity. Give us some money. So the, we ended up collecting. We collected quite a bit of money. And that evening on the way home from school, we went in the cook shop and bought some things, you know, bits, small things. And then the next day we did shaking for the money and we sold the um, the items that we bought in the shop. We made a bit more on that night. And really it was because I wanted to go in this shop and spend money in the shop. I liked the shop. And, and eventually we kept buying and selling, buying and selling, and we made a bit of money. And obviously we go to the school for the charity. So I was the eldest of three, still am the eldest of three. Um, a lot of my formative years were in Yorkshire and Wakefield and Leeds. My dad was governor of army jail. <laughs> and um, But I wasn't a conformist. Uh, I was always getting in trouble. <laughs> Maybe There's because of that, I'm not sure. Uh, and I moved down south to Weymouth when I was 14, and I had a very strong Yorkshire accent in those days. I mean, I may as well have come from Mars, very tough old boys, old boys school that I went into. It took me a bit of time to settle and sort of, you know, find my find my routine and, and get settled. And, um, yeah, it's a quick summary of my childhood. I, I don't really think I've changed that much. I think my strengths and, and strengths and weaknesses are probably still, um, you know, quite similar. Um, I think most people would would give me a tag of being the world's friend. And, and sometimes in business that works really well when you're trying to build rapport and influence and, um, you know, get people around to your way of thinking. And then sometimes in life it means that, that maybe – um, people feel they can take advantage of you but I I've never changed my approach I think that um, I'm I'm quite stubborn and quite competitive but but at the end of the day I'm a I'm a decent human being with with values and integrity and I think I've always had had that I would always be there for anyone um, and that hasn't changed at all I'm still that yeah. person so so you've got have you got friends still then from sort of school that you've kept that um that's interesting isn't it? I think as a child I was probably I was in a group of three and that was always quite hard I was always the one that ended up being the odd one out but I was quite studious and academic and, and kind of really got my head down I suppose yeah I was I was probably a bit of a loner I like my own company even now so you know sometimes if I if I need to take some time out that that's what I need to do just to sort of recharge so yeah, I, I haven't really changed at all in that respect. Again, I had to think back long and hard here. When you get to your middle 60s, you uh, it's a lawful lot. Are long you long really long. middle 60s? I am, I am. I didn't know that. I thought you were late well, 50s. 60, what am I, 64 next birthday, 60. Wow, okay. Yeah, no, you. Are, I, I'll give you that then. You are older than I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a child, I used to be very imaginative. Um, I used to make up stories, plays. I went to nine different primary schools. My dad was in the Navy, then they were in the pub trade, the uh, uh, hotel and catering pub trade. So we moved around all the time. Um, mm. I would make up plays um, for the other kids to do. Although, bizarrely, people find this hard to believe, I wasn't actually that keen on performing. 
Um, I did, but I, I didn't actually enjoy that. I enjoyed the, the putting it together and structuring it and the words. Um, I, I look back at some pictures completely uh, coincidentally. I was looking at pictures going back to donkey's years that some, my mum had, and um, the I looked very geeky. <laughs> I, know, I remember that big sticky out ears, um, toothy grin. I, I broke a tooth when I was young, and it was like that until I was in my twenties. So I had a um, an odd sort of grin. Um, and I suppose the only other thing I love rugby. I loved school until the late last year in sixth form. And I absolutely love rugby, and I played rugby as much as I could all the time. When I wasn't working, um, I played rugby all the time. Because well, that, like, it feels like, um, I mean, <laughs> it, it feels like I don't know where it came from, if I'm honest. Um, I, uh, I had, a, you know, had a loving family growing up, but neither of my parents worked, and we didn't, I didn't have a particularly great upbringing in terms of uh, you know how easy it was. Um, we didn't have a car. We didn't go on holiday. I was loved, but I didn't certainly have some of the things that maybe some of my peers and school friends had. And you know there was a combination of factors for that. You know, my dad was in the army for twenty years, lost his job under uh, the conservative government taking control in the late seventies, and never really worked. Again. He was like forty at the time, and he just was on the scrap heap like a lot of blokes, forty plus. Uh, it kind of comes home to Ruth and I and me being 40, thinking about that and how maybe that was different. Um, so my upbringing wasn't really ever a, a scenario of, any, you know, as I said, I was loved and we did things, but it was never really a sense of sort of push yourself, push yourself, push yourself to do stuff. So I don't know, I kind of, <laughs> I, I, it's weird. This. I remember I remember a moment, it's like a seminal moment in my life. I was about eight years old. Um, I wasn't planning on going into this, but here we are. Right, so... Um, <laughs> and I was, I was at my aunt and uncle's house for Christmas and we'd taken some presents over there and I was opening presents. And uh, as I opened my presents, some of my presents were secondhand and you could see that the boxes and some of the games were like a bit torn. And I, I always remember this moment now, 30, 32, 33 years ago, my aunt looking at my uncle and going, and I remember thinking to myself at that age, you know what, like the, she's probably thinking that's a bit, a bit of a shame and I can't fix it now, but one day I will fix it. And that kind of like stuck with me from that point, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there is that Apple potential stuff, Apple then. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the love was there, so therefore you felt safe. Usually, isn't it? If 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 you're loved, yeah. but not having things at the time probably didn't mean much to you. But as life goes on, and you realise I could get these things, and actually, if I work hard or push myself, then why not? That, um, that, that, that really that really fueled me that did because all the things that I didn't have I thought to myself particularly when I got into recruitment this is obviously great for people that hopefully are watching this that are in recruitment or the early stages to realize that you know whether you've been from a really you know affluent background or you know when I lived at a council flat for a bit or anywhere in between that um mm. got the opportunity to, to change change it which is just brilliant and I realized very early on that actually that is the kind of life that I, I could lead and I could live in and I could step into that world because I was capable of doing it. Um, yeah. But sometimes not having those things, I think for me, gave me an extra level of aspiration and motivation and commitment to try and get it because I'd never seen it, you know. I mean, at any, the first time I did one, I paid for myself, you know, the first house that I bought, I did it off my own back, you know, everything was, was on me. And as much as there are a lot of people that this will be different for, it just meant a bit more to me in terms of getting getting there basically 